recording. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the second developer community meeting for AI. If you haven't already, please scan the QR code on your screen to take attendance. And let's get started. My, so my name is David Yanyu. I am one of your AI leads. Anjali, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, uh, so hello, um, everyone. I'm Pranjali, and yeah, I just joined this month as an AI tech lead. All right, thank you. So today we're going to be going over data, and we're going to show you guys the hello world of ML. So let's start. Take it away, Anjali. All right, everyone. So, um, so the, like, the agenda for this meeting is, of course, the recap of the last developer community meeting. Um, and we've covered then uh, three W's of data. When is data? Uh, what is data? Why is data? Uh, data pre-processing, standardization, um, the 80-20 rule. Uh, Pandas, which is the main uh, library that we use for uh, processing data. TensorFlow, Keras, uh, scikit-learn is what we use to actually build our models and the functions that, that go into that. And then Hello World of ML is gonna be a live demo that we're gonna be showing you guys. And then Kaggle competition announcement. So um, yeah, that's the agenda for today. So recap for last uh, the, like, uh, the dev community meeting. Um, it's about you know what, what, this, what the AI dev community meeting stands for, um, encouraging the use of AI. Uh, using Collab and Kaggle. So Collab is what we're uh, doing all the demos with, and Kaggle is where we're gonna be you know, giving out swag and where you guys gonna be finding challenges that, that you know, you'll know you compete in um, and data sets, et cetera. So that's all of, all of that's gonna be on Kaggle. Uh, Python is essential. That's the main language that we use in AI, coding, pre-processing, everything. Um, and it's, it's really essential, I guess, to know that if, if you're getting into ML and AI. Uh, competitions are a thing and so are points. So that's the point system that uh, David went over last meeting um, is, you know, how much, how much do you get for uh, winning a competition? How much do you get for attending a meeting, et cetera, et cetera. And so the CAG competition that I mentioned, uh, AI is hyped up math. And so that's what we, went over like the the very end of, of last meeting. Um, and yeah, yeah that, that's the recap. So next slide. So what is data? Um, I like those uh, red little, uh, those things that you put under the heading. So the problems it is data. So yeah, data. Uh, information collected together for reference and, and analysis. It's what ML models are built on. It's any kind of, you can call anything data, uh, you know. How many uh, toothbrushes have you changed in the past six months? I don't know why I'm thinking of that. Maybe it's just because I, I bought a new toothbrush today, but um, anything can, can, can count as data and uh, can, can you know, be put into an ML model. So I could have, like, I could have a regression model. Okay, how many uh, toothbrushes do I plan on buying in the next month based on previous activity? Um, and so that's data. And CS to ED, so, can be in different formats. So JSON is one that we use to describe data. That's that, that's like one file that I've uh, actually used a lot um, in scientific research. So uh, JSON's one, and we've got Excel, which I'm sure most of you are really familiar with. And then we've got comma separated values, which is a CSV file. And so uh, the picture that you see in the very like right uh, right bottom corner is a CSV file where you have three columns separated by commas. Um, ID sales and category. And uh, CSV is our preferred format, which is uh, like read by Panda, the Pandas library. And so there's a read CSV function that we use um, to, to um, analyze uh, CSV files and then we've got describe, mean, standard deviation, all those, all that fun stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> Next slide. Yeah. Right. So why is data? Well, um, because, I, I mean, I like that, because math. Um, machine learning models need data to learn. Just kind of went over that. Um, whether you're doing like a classification model or you're doing a regression model, um, classification just means 
uh, trying to tell whether like something is a cat or something is a dog. So like classifying it into categories. So you need data for that. You need data to start from. Same thing with regression. Um, models start off stupid. They have, so without any data, the model doesn't know anything. And you need to fade data into it so that it learns from different features that the data has. The bigger the model, the more data it needs. So, um, I mean, it, it, so I, the bigger, I, I, I really don't know how to like explain these further because they just stand for what, you know, what they need. The bigger the model, the more data. So Diva, do you want to say something? So think of it like this, the bigger the, the AI that you want to do, like the more complex you want to make it, the more data you need to, to ensure that that model can make the, or can learn those complex uh, patterns in the data. So in order to learn these complex patterns, it needs a lot of data to learn it <laughs> because if not, it's just kind of gonna learn some arbitrary patterns and not really do anything with data. <laughs> in that case, it would be actually better to have a very simple model instead of like a big one, right? Right, okay, yeah. that, that's a better description. Um, of, of the bigger the model, the more data it needs. So the more advanced you go into uh, what you want to find and to the scale to which you want to find it, uh, the more data you need to give to the model. So it, it can accurately, you know, uh, perform the classification or the regression or what, whatever you want it to do. Um, yeah. When is data? <laughs> so, I mean, the meme is really nice. Um, puts tape on webcam, FBI agent watching me from my toaster. So um, we're collecting data all the time, everywhere. Um, like literally, you can, you can make data out of, out of anything that you're near. You know that I'm literally buying, uh, I literally just went to grocery store today and I gave you an example of buying toothbrushes. So um, it's, it's you, you'll find it, you'll find data everywhere. Everything, every, any kind of information, any kind of um, knowledge uh it counts as counts as data i'll tell you guys a story actually uh i was in a competition in this club actually uh, about making an ai and submitting it to them for for scoring and the ai i made was a joke generator and mm -hmm. i actually scraped off some jokes from reddit it was, it was a horrible joke generator but hey it, it did what it needed to do that, that's a really cool project. Um, All right, so I'll take over from now. Thank you, Franjali, right. you did great. So 80% of the time is spent getting the data ready for use. This is the 80-20 rule of data science. What this basically says is 80% of the time you're at work, most of it is just getting data ready for use because data is not it's not all perfect. You, there's like missing values, there's incorrect data, there's out of date data, all, all types of data that's, that needs to be fixed. So yeah, perfect data doesn't, it doesn't really exist. You need to actually pre-process it. So that's what we're gonna go over right now. So no values. These are values that don't exist, that are just missing. So let's say someone's collecting data on, let's say, biking trips. And let's say someone doesn't make a biking trip one day. There's no data for that day. So, so you can only have no values for those datas. The two, the two ways that we deal with this is either we impute it or replace with zero or another value, those missing values or no values or we can delete that instance. We can just not take that data into account in the, in the example of collecting data from biking trips. We can just not take that data into account. We can delete it. Standardization. Uh, so this is uh, fairly common to prevent explosions. And what we wanna do is stop the data from being too wild. So here, I'll give you an example. Age, 15 to 54, weight, 160, 158. So 
at first glance, this doesn't look too bad, right? But when you go into the model, because of the math, this is really bad because these, the difference in these numbers, 15 to 160, it, the model will actually put more weight. And by weight, I mean more importance on the bigger number. So what you wanna do is standardize the numbers so that they're in a, in a similar range. The, the, the value will still be the same in terms of uh, the relevance of, of it. So 15 will be turned into like probably like 0 0.5 or something like that. And weight, since it's a lot bigger, will probably go to like 0 0.8. But the main idea is uh, put down the, the numbers into smaller range so that we don't have a difference of importance between features. And by features, I mean the things like age, weight, or any column in your data. All right, are there any questions? I did kind of go kind of fast on this. All right, question. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I, I think like, so I've heard normalization too. Um, and it also, it's, it kind of like sounds similar um, you know, when normalization basically means reducing the scale of your data. So whether you, if you have like a really big outlier somewhere at like 456,000, whatever in your data set, um, then you try to bring those values down to zero and one. So how is that different, uh, from, from standardization? It's actually pretty similar. Right. A normalization is just a different form of doing the same thing. Normalization, you're trying to actually put the, the values instead of uh, standard, uh, instead of, let's say, centering it around the values or the mean of this column, you're, you're uh, centering it around a normal distribution. Right. Right, actually, so it's, it's like a really small difference there. So that's why, that's why it's, they're often mentioned together. That makes sense. Right. All right. Does anyone understand any questions? We'll show you. We'll show you how this works later, in in the practical example. All right. Next slide. Categorical values. All right. So let's get this out of the way first. Computers, or machines, or the models. They do not work well with words or strings. They work really well with numbers. So the main thing you're gonna be doing with categorical values and categorical just means words, word values, is you're gonna to have to be turning those word values into numbers for, for your computer. So there's two ways to do this that I know of. The first way is to replace the, the, the words with numbers and have an external legend. So let's say you have like the data and there's like favorite color, blue, red, green. You wanna turn those into one, two, three. And then later you can reference those numbers like, all right, one is blue, two is red, three is green, if you really have to. But that's just one way. Another way is one hot encoding. Why is it called one hot encoding? Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know, but I'll, I do know what it's about. So let's say you have this column of categorical values, Python and Java. Again, computer does not like words, likes numbers. So one hot encoding will basically, instead of having these in rows, I'll have them in the columns. And it'll, in the rows, it'll say, all right, this value is this row. So this person in this row is a Python year, one for Python and zero for Java. And that's basically what I was saying here, right? Python, likes Python, 
no Java. And here for this row, this person, no Python, Java. All right, do you understand? This is the easiest way I can explain it. And let's say there were multiple words in this row. Let's say this was Python and Java. Well, if in for this row, it would be one for Python and one for Java, meaning both of the languages. So Python and Java in Word equals Python one, Java one. Does that make sense? Um, just want to say, so um, it's called one hot <clears throat> because um, because only one bit is, is true. So you only have one, like one one. Um, and so that's why it's called one hot. So if you, <clears throat> there's another term called one code encoding. And that happens when you're talking about like only one zero being, being there. And so, because only one bit is uh, is signified by a one um, in 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 categorical data, that's why that's why it, uh, it's called one hot encoder. All right, thank you, Pranjali, with the with the super research big brain definitions. All right, before we move on, does anyone have any questions? Does this make sense? All right, Lewis with the super, super engagement today. Thank you. All right, let's move on then. Pandas. So this is gonna be our tool for modifying and visualizing data. It has a bunch of useful functions. I, I have this super helpful 10 minute guide. You can learn it real quick. Trust me, this is really easy. Once you start using it, you'll love it. I'll put it in the chat. The a Discord chat. I mean. For you guys. There you go. I don't want to forget. And TensorFlow API and Scikit-Learn. These are going to be our tools and our toolboxes. So TensorFlow and Scikit-Learn, they're the toolboxes. Scikit-Learn has a ton of cool stuff for pre-processing. And Keras is going to be our tool to make ML models. Keras is part of TensorFlow. So you can see how that works. These, I don't recommend learning them uh, all at once. So it's better to get used to some of the functions first, make sure you understand how they work and then move on to other stuff. And so you have a wider range of tools, but I, don't, I can't recommend learning them all at once. But if you are uh, willing to do it, there are some YouTube videos and books out there for you. All right. Hello world. All right, let's do this real quick. So here I am in a collab. If you if you want, you can open a collab and follow along. So let's have a variable x. Let's have it equal to mp dot and the array. Actually, no, let me just make it a Python on this so it makes sense. Let's have it be one, two, three, four, five. Simple enough, right? <laughs> so what we want to do now is have an AI learn the pattern Three X plus three. 
All right. Does everyone know algebra? Do you know what that's, this means? All right. So why? So we need to make sure we're following this pattern. This is gonna be our label. This is gonna be our training, our training labels, our output labels. Three X plus three, that's six, nine, 12, 15, how many? 18. All right. All right, now let's create our first model. All right, don't, if, if you get lost, please speak up. So let's instantiate our model. It's going to be a sequential. Now this is, we're using Keras right now. And a sequential model is basically like a neural network. So it's going to have these layers. Oh, by the way, let me actually send you guys this website. And you can actually look up the definition of stuff yourself. Pretty cool. All right, we're gonna have this model with layers like a neural network. And now we're going to add our layers. All right, model. We're gonna add. is the depth of our layer. We're gonna have an input shape. Of one. Then we're gonna add another one. What did I do? Look at the equal sign. Okay, is everyone following along? Here's our, here's our model. And if you want an overview of it, we can use the model about summary. And here it is. This is a really basic neural network. We basically just created a neural network. So now we need to compile this model. An optimizer, this is gonna be our training mechanism, RMS prop, root mean squared propagation, just feed forward. If you don't understand these terms, hey, go over to that website, just put it. search up neural network. We can search up uh, 
our mess prop. Our loss function. This is gonna, this function is gonna say, all right, this is how close you are to the real answer. So 100% answer. It's gonna be. Messy epochs. This is how many times we want to train our model. Let's put it at 50. All right, hopefully, I didn't put anything wrong. All right, I put it, I put this wrong. Oh, I can't believe I spelled this wrong. Uh. Oh, that's in fix. Whoops, I'm sorry. I disable this metrics. Mean average error. All right, we've compiled the model. Now we're going to use the model and our data. We're going to train the model with our data. X, Y. Oops, I forgot to put the box. Man, these that box getting me today. And let's try to predict. Let's see. Let's try something it hasn't learned yet. Six. Six. It says 1.67, and that is completely wrong. What can we do? But hey, here's our model. We trained it on some data and we predicted a value. Hey, that's the hello world. All right, let me separate the, the sections a little bit more. And now share this as well. All right, what you guys can do now, you guys can open it, make a copy, put a file, there should be like a make a copy button, modify it like as you want. All right. And once you do that, hey, you're one step closer to being an AI pro than a lot of people, all right?
All right. And you know what? I'm not, I'm not happy with that outcome. Six. Hundred. I forgot to compile. Huh? It actually got worse. Oh, wait a second, I know what I did wrong. This is a process, guys. I'll, I'll modify it later. All right. So let's talk about our first cattle competition. So the first cattle competition is going to be on house prices. This is the first competition in cattle that you'll see. I'll put the link in the chat. This is one of the very, well, almost one of the basic ones in cattle. So it should be easy. I've made this uh, base notebook for you guys that you guys can modify. So I'll walk you guys through it. So we're gonna be using Pandas in here, we're loading our data. And you can see if you go to the competition page, you can go to data, you can go to your training data, you can see all the data here. Yeah, let's load in our data. And this is the fundamentals data structure of pandas. It's called a data frame, or it's basically just a table. You can see all our data here. But let's simplify it a little. So it's only these few columns. We'll have our test. These are the shapes. And now, in order to pre-process it all, we need to put the two data frames together. Here, it's kind of added up. If you see the number of rows here, number of rows here, equals to the number of rows here, if it added up. We're gonna pre-process it. So here are the things we're gonna do to it. We're gonna replace the null man values with zero. So this is imputing or replacing the null, null values. And we're going to replace them with zero using a simple imputer from scikit-learn. 
right? Because if you actually go to this lot frontage column and search up the, the number of NAND or null values. And what you gotta do this to me? Basically, there's nano and all values in this column. And we gotta replace them. And we're gonna replace them with zero. Because what this is basically saying is there's no data for a lot frontage in these properties. So what we're gonna do, instead of having them be as null, no or missing values, we're gonna put it as zero. So to indicate, yeah, there's nothing here for law frontage. We're gonna then standardize or you know, shrink down those numbers to smaller scale using the standard scalar of scikit-learn, scalar fit transform. But this basically means is fit to the data and then transform it. But we're gonna be using the two columns, lot area of lot frontage. And then we're gonna do our one hot encoding for the two categorical columns we have, utilities and sale condition. You can see them up here, utilities and sale condition. These are not for words. We don't want words. So we're gonna use the get dummies function to one hot encode. That. Let's unsplit or split up the, the data sets again. Now we can see here it is, the standardized numbers. You can see that they're in a lot smaller range. And here's our one hot encodings. So if you can compare that, you can compare it to the original. 8,450, 65, all called normal. That's definitely less than 8,000. Less than 50, all pub is one because that's what the word was. And it's gonna say no to all the other utilities. And the still condition was normal. So it's gonna put one in normal and zero in the rest. And here's just a test. Now we're gonna split the data into train and test. The training data is gonna be used to train the model. And the test data is gonna be used to see if the model is doing good. So let's initialize our model. It's gonna be a random forest regressor. It is a decision tree model. If you look up here, random forest. Let me split it up. Random forest. It's just saying, it just makes decision trees and it's in an ensemble of decision trees. So it's a lot of decision trees and these decision trees, they have like a bunch of conditions so that it can decide what number it wants to put it's very interesting. I would, I would, I would recommend looking into this article. So let's initialize it. We're gonna train our model on our training data. And then we're gonna see if it's good. That's pretty bad, but it's what we got. <laughs> let's create our submission. So this is how you're gonna submit your, your notebook. You're gonna create your submission. It's gonna be ID and a sale price. This is what you're gonna be uh, predicting, the sale price. And you're gonna make a, a submission here. And in order to submit it, 
we will go to save version. We save this version. It takes a while. But when it's done, you're gonna go over here to show versions. And then there's gonna be a button to actually submit it. All right, go to version. Okay, you're gonna to submit to competition. Here's the competition. You want to have a special description, whatever. You're going to submit your submission. That's CSV. And submit. You're going to send me a link to your notebook. And I'll show you how to do that. I click this button. You go up to your share, you put it as public. You get this link, you send it, you DM me through Discord or Punjali through Discord, and you get a screenshot of your score and send it to me. Or you go to the leaderboard, take a screenshot of your position on the leaderboard, and then send it into the Discord chat. Like so. Uh, be snipping tool to do this. Copy. Paste. Okay. All right. So from the outside looking in, how would you do this? Let me uh, stop sharing and share my screen again so you can see this. So here I am in my notebook. You would sign into your account first of all, into your Kaggle account. Hopefully, you made one by now. And you would press copy and edit. So then you would have this notebook for yourself and you can edit it. All right. I know it's a lot, but trust me, one. Once once you're actually doing it, it's 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 pretty simple. So now's the time I'll give you some advice on the Kaggle, some exclusive advice. Sorry if you're watching this online. I'm gonna have to stop the recording here. Uh, where's it? 